today I want to talk about JSON Relational Duality Views, a new feature being introduced with release 23C of the database. The problem that JSON Relational Duality Views address is the different ways that database administrators and developers tend to work. DBAs, like me, work with relational, relational structures. We like to normalize everything. I would normalize human beings if I could. And the result of this is a set of related tables that are very efficient and very versatile for some forms of data processing. However, developers often prefer to work in unstructured or semi-structured environments where data may be denormalized into objects or stored as documents or even as freeform key value pairs. From the application development point of view, denormalized and self-describing data may be much easier to work with than relational tables. So how does JavaScript object notation fit into this? First, let's be clear. JSON is taking over the universe. Why? Well, in the 21st century, distributed data processing where application components can run on different servers and be developed by different people using different languages and different databases are becoming ever more popular. So a standard is needed for these com components to communicate and JSON has emerged as that standard. So what is it? It's a text-based way of storing and transmitting JavaScript objects. Um, we have many tutorials about what JSON is and how to develop JSON-based applications. So all I shall say now is that it relies on documents consisting of name-value pairs. The database new feature I'm going to demonstrate allows DBAs to administer relational tables while developers are seeing JSON documents. And this is done by the new facility, JSON Relational Duality Views. What we shall see is that you can get to the data with absolutely normal SQL, select, insert, update, delete statements against relational tables. But you can also get to the data through any language with JSON support. I'm going to work as usual, in the Scott demonstration schema. Beginning with adapt table. Well, that's SQL. But perhaps my developers don't want to use SQL. Maybe they're getting at this table through a RESTful service call, for instance. So what I'll do is cover the table with a view. Create or replace JSON relational duality view, JDEPT, as select. And then we've got a JSON formatted document. Note at the bottom, with insert, update, delete, it will be possible to do DML through this view as well as select. And what the view is doing is mapping column names, depth no, dename, lock to the names that will be exposed in the JSON document. Now, I can query the view with a straightforward select. Select star from jdept. And the result is perhaps a bit of a mess. But you can see the general concept. We've got one row for each department. I'll just format things a bit better. And then we can see a bit more information. Each department is there. Note at the head of each of the rows, you've got metadata than e-tag and as of. That is to do with um, enabling optimistic locking. Because in the web environment, you normally do optimistic locking because of the unreliable nature of the connections. But beneath that, we can see 
the rows formatted as a JSON document. We do have a function call that can make it a bit easier to read. So what I've done there is I've selected JSON serialize, the column data, and told it to make it pretty. And now we get something that's a lot more readable. Here, for instance, is the document describing the Boston department. Now I'll take it a step further with a view that denormalizes depth and amp. So create or replace JSON relational duality view J depth amp as, and I've got two select statements in here. First, pretty much what I had before, select JSON, department ID mapped onto the column depth node, department name mapped onto D name and so on. And that is coming from depth. But here we've got a new attribute, employees. And within the employees, I've got a tear, an array, or generating an array, which selects from emp. And again, I'm mapping JSON names to the columns of the emp table. And insert, update, delete, enabled for both emp and depth. And here we have the join filter. If I query the view, you can see maybe what's going on here. I've got my four documents, one for each department, and within each department we've got an array of the employees. The square brackets indicate the array coming in there. Uh, department 40 down here doesn't have any employees. Uh, to prettify it, I'll use the function that makes it more comprehensible, JSON serialized data pretty. And now we can see that, for instance, within department sales, we then have sections or documents for each of the employees in that department. Lastly, let's do some DML. Department 40 here, operations in Boston, has no employees. So I'll add one like this. Update the view set data equals. And there are the attributes of the department. And there's an employee. Employee 9999 is me, DBA, on that salary. And there's a filter that says which department I want to apply this update to. And we get the message back one row updated. Now, it may seem a bit odd to do an insert with an update. We'll check that it has actually worked. I'll query the table first with SQL. Select star from emp, where depth node equals 40, and there I am. So the update has done the insert. How is that possible? Because at the JSON document level, I'm updating the document for department 40 by adding another employee. Uh, relational integrity, by the way, don't forget to handle commit and rollback, thinking about optimistic and pessimistic locking and so on. Uh, transaction management in distributed environments can be awkward. I'll just commit that there. And if we go back to query the view in the way that a JSON developer would, there we see my last department now does have an employee. To conclude, JSON duality views can keep everyone happy. 
Your developers can work with REST services and all the new web development languages without compromising the relational mechanisms that let your DBAs, that your DBAs rely on to implement all the performance and data integrity rules that the database offers. This is a big technical advance with 23C. If you liked this video, please like it and subscribe to our channel.